it may be time to revisit one of the first contemplations on this channel and expand upon it. The one I'm referring to is named Scripts and Purpose, and I highly recommend that it is listened to, either for the first time or again, before proceeding with this one. The link is in the description. Now, in that contemplation, the lower and higher scripts, merely my vocabulary, are addressed and the link to a supposed purpose is made in relation to the lower script's motivation to keep the soul engaged. However, this was missing a very important distinction regarding the lower script. Per se and naturally, the lower script is a narrative that enables and provides context for characters that are generated by the egos or souls that are, in their turn, generated by their original, living counterparts. In some circles, the word chosen to define that living essence is spirit, but I don't really like the word myself, so I've been preferring to use the term living essence instead. This lower script is fed by the living essence through the soul ego and through the character currently in it, and so it adapts as a mirror to show the character whatever stimuli, or lack thereof, that are more suitable to keep the character engaged. This is the nature of the world and, ultimately, its purpose. To provide adapted purposes that mirror potential sins so that they can be confronted in the context of a timed narrative and be observed and realized by the living essence through the projected counterparts. It needs to be clarified that since a commenter on this channel named Adam Lane clarified to me about two years ago what the origin of the word sin was, I have been using that word with that definition. He showed me that sin was originally an archery term that meant missing the mark. Now, Organized cults, big and small, have used that term to lay out Procrustean beds for their followers, that is, beds that will stretch one that is too short for it and that will cut one that is too tall for it. Note that in the myth of Procrustes, the bed could never truly be an exact fit for anyone, so nobody could actually lay on that bed and be an exact match for its length. Obviously, this is a metaphor. In the cultist sense, then, sin is used to describe the difference in that metaphorical length that one always has in relation to the length of their presented bed of procrustes. However, beyond that, sin is missing the mark in relation to the living essence, not to a standard set within the world even if claimed to be divine. Those potential sins that are hidden from the living essence outside of time are therefore revealed here inside of time, in the mirror world, as the world mechanism, so to speak, detects and reflects with brutal and ruthless honesty all the potentials any essence engaging with it has please also refer to the contemplation named Mirror. So it is an impossible and frustrating attempt for a mental character in the world to, metaphorically, try to fit the bed of standards that are incompatible. It is impossible for the mental character to become just as divine as the standards given because that would dissolve the character's limited place and point of observation. The mental character was generated to be smaller than the soul, and the soul was generated to be smaller than the living essence. Instead of that cultist framework, the character is playing out a story, an individual narrative set into a collective one, that mirrors the potential sins, that is, the hidden potentials that are missing the mark, of its living and true essence. So the living essence creates the soul ego, and the soul ego creates the mental character 
to interact with the mirror world. The only actual purpose, however, is to observe. Certainly the character will need to, and is in many ways forced to, interact with the world, and the narratives of the lower script it is set in. But those actions are only valuable as a means for observation by the soul, and, consequently, observation by the essence. When the living essence observes the mental character in the script, it is a contemplation. This is a more thorough observation of what I call lower script. For an observation of the higher script, do refer to the contemplation mentioned earlier, named scripts and purpose. Here, I will observe that the fake and staged script is like a sphere that vies to trap the mental character that was already set to live under the domed limitations of his own mind and brain. The living essence, however, is limited by neither. It is infinite. It was important, therefore, to try to describe the natural lower script because there are artificial lower scripts, thoroughly faked and staged, that impose upon the natural one. These steer worldviews and beliefs, and seem to follow a plan that has a purpose. That purpose, when observed, seems to be a collection of all the sins within a contained lower script. Therefore, the mentioned plan can only come from shadows or reflections that represent where, potentially, the essences metaphorically miss the mark. One of the aspects that defines a shadow or reflection is its unrelenting hatred for its original, that is, for what casts it as a shadow or reflection. Also, make no mistake, both sides of mental character expectations will be played by shadows in these fake and staged lower scripts, be them good or evil. These are false scripts, false narratives imposed upon the organic falsehood of the natural world. However, when observed more closely, and again observation is key and essential, these artificial fake narratives are also a part or subset of the natural lower scripts, because they emerged from them. A small lie becomes a bigger one, as it is fed and fueled. It is always at an individual level that the observation, contemplation and consequent realization takes place. But for that to occur, for something to be observed, contemplated and realized, a narrative or story must be in place. Does this mean that the planners of such fake narratives have as a purpose the ultimate contemplation and realization of the living essences? No, not in my view. But that does not mean that it will not bring it about as a collateral consequence, one that only occurs at the individual level, never the collective. When the shadows learned of this collateral consequence, they also started including, in their fake scripts, the seeds of unconsciousness, that is, of self-censorship from observation itself. Their objective is for the mental characters that are connected to souls or egos, and to living essences, to just take the story or narrative, be involved and invested in it, and never observe it or go beyond it. The fake lower script acts then, if successful, as a framework for the mental character to exist in sheer automation. Still, the mentioned collateral observations, contemplations and realizations, be them big or small, trivial or important, keep occurring at the individual level because they are not only always the inevitable consequence of the lower scripts, whichever form they may take, but also brought about by the miraculous edits introduced by the essence via the higher script, 
For more on this, please refer again to the contemplation named Miracles. These collaterals eventually force the shadow's plan to escalate to a more open violence and oppression, no longer covered by the aesthetic facade of the narrative. In turn, this uncovered violence also exposed the shadows themselves, even to those who, beforehand, never observed. Consequently, the fake lower script like the natural one, also always culminates in the promotion of observation, contemplation and realization on the part of the living essences. And I emphasize, it is always individually, never collectively. As that gradually occurs, the shadows tend to grow more desperate, and the more despair regulates their actions and the adjustments to their planned fake scripts and narratives, the more visible they become, thus generating more individual observation. That is always the culmination of the higher script, whose sole interest is in the observation of its potential sins, again, where it misses the mark so that they can, through realization, be adjusted and reintegrated in their proper place. I don't think that this is visible to the mental character, however, as its uh, limitations are too confining for that higher observation. But that is not expected either. Only observation is expected. In fact, for a mental character to attempt observations way above its own limitations often results in either madness, the revelation and release of more potential shadows and reflections into its own individual script, or a combination of both. As limited mental characters partake in the world and narratives only as much as necessary, but always observe as that is both the gift and the salvation.